What's up, YouTube? I'm Mike. It's Dan back with another video. Uh, I want to. Uh, this is kind of another thinking out loud video. Um, I feel like I was at the gym today, and uh, the mint and the, and all the all the everything that I'm on is just flowing through my system in a major way, and I just felt ungodly strong. Uh, I just hammered my back into oblivion. I, 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 this is probably the happiest I've ever been with the shape and size of my physique in my lifetime. That being said, uh, I still am concerned with the number on the scale. Uh, I got to looking at some of my old um, um, uh, posing videos and my physique is definitively different looking and I'm considerably leaner around my midsection and back, my back than I was when I blew up to 214. So I know that things are still tracking in the right direction but I'm impatient. And so because of my impatience, because of my desire now to uh, you know, there was a period where I was like, oh, you know, 200 is as good as I'm going to get. Now I'm like two, 210 plus at night, and I, I seem to just be continuously leaning out. And I'm very dry and vascular all over to be in a bulk where I'm averaging 500 to 600 grams of carbs per day. And am now ingesting up, you know, upwards, like... Like close to a thousand calories in, in in olive oil per day. I posted some pictures to the uh, progress photos, pic, the progress pictures section of our Discord today, showing my legs and how they are totally peeled and just absolutely full of veins. Like there is just absolutely zero water retention, no fat on my calves, no bloat, no nothing. So this got me thinking about a potential hypocrisy that is going on maybe inside of my brain and potentially in, in the brains of, uh, of people in my comment section, maybe just bodybuilders at large. I was looking at Regan Grimes' Instagram page the other day and the guy is looking fucking massive. But he's clearly in the off season and he is just bloated and full all over his body. There is little, he just looks like, the, he just looks wet and fat all over. I mean, obviously, he look, don't, don't misunderstand. He, he, the guy always looks amazing. But he's not, he doesn't have all the cuts and the vascularity and everything because he's in the middle of a bulk. But so am I. So am I. I. I'm in the middle of a bulk. And yet, no matter how much I eat, no, look, when I was on MK, I was eating so ravenously that I was having this giant distended belly in the in, at the end of the evening. I look six months pregnant. And yet, I still am not managing to attain this completely soaking wet, bloated look all over my body, which is obviously keeping my total body weight down. So... When you look at the minimum weights for various different weight classes, like if I was going to compete, for example, at the pro bodybuilding level, in men's physique, I could not be more than, I think it was 212 pounds on stage or, or a check-in. And then for like classic physique, it's like 220 or something. So I'm 212 right now, give or take. And while I'm not in stage condition, my upper body is very dry, very cut, very... There's not a lot from my basically... From my legs and my upper body, there's just not a lot of, of body fat at all to lose. So if I was just trying to get into stage condition, I have still plenty of body fat around my midsection to lose, which again, you can't see in this camera. You can't see, I don't know why I can see perfect six pack abs in my viewfinder and you can't see it on the camera at all. But I, I still definitively have, would have body fat around my midsection to lose. So here, so here's what I'm getting at. All of us in the bodybuilding community regularly try to call out pro bodybuilders and say that they lie about the quantity of steroids they use. Guys are always saying that to be 230, 240, 260, that these guys are running two to three grams of gear or more per week. That that's what's required 
to have a pro bodybuilder physique. Now, while I'm not trying to be a competitive bodybuilder, I do want to have a pro bodybuilder body. I want to be 230 fucking plus. And yet, I'm only taking up to about 1.5 grams of gear per week, which seems to be a problem. If we're gonna if we're gonna argue on the one hand that in order for these guys to get as big as they are, they have to be running two to three grams of gear per week, but then I'm constantly in my comment section reading people telling me that I'm on too much gear, that I'm wasting my gear, that I, that I don't need that much to achieve my bodybuilding goals. So which one is it? Th th this seems to be a hypocrisy. It seems to be a hypocrisy amongst people who are not at the pro level, who are constantly downplaying the amount of gear that needs to be used, and then when they're talking about somebody at the pro level, they're saying, oh, those guys use two to three grams of gear a week. This seems like the Dunning-Kruger effect of bodybuilding. Like, when it comes to you, you don't really need that, you don't really need to be taking that much shit. But when it comes to somebody who's substantially bigger than you, oh, well, they're taking giant, amount, giant amounts of gear. So if they're taking giant amounts of gear to get to be 230, 240, 260, then it would logically follow that for somebody of my size, it would probably take two to three grams of gear to get that big. So I am rapidly beginning to wonder if the problem really is not the calories. Because when I eat in a massive calorie surplus, I still stay so dry and vascular and peeled, no matter how many grams of carbs I consume, it doesn't seem to matter. Now, obviously, I'm not eating five to 6,000 calories a day. Maybe that's what these guys are doing. Maybe they're eating 10,000 calories a day. Maybe if I could just get to seven or eight or 10,000 calories a day, I, I would be able to grow to 230, 240, 250 on, the, on a gram and a half of gear. I know that the argument is made that in the off season, the guys take substantially less, that they don't have to take that much to get really big in the off season. But let's keep in mind, these guys are also genetic elites. While I clearly feel like I have decent bodybuilding genetics, I'm not a genetic elite. I started at 135 pounds soaking wet. I have never in my life been a mass monster. So I'm beginning to wonder, and maybe this is just the drug addict in me. I'm sure that it is. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just making excuses for what I want to do anyway. But th this again is one of those rare times where I'm really interested for audience feedback. I would really like to know. For those of you in my audience who are bigger than me, if you are 230 plus, competitive bodybuilder or not, if you are 230 pounds in 230 pounds or more in striking distance of stage conditioning, I would like to know, were you able to get to that weight running less than two to three grams of gear per week? Do you agree that, that, that where we're at, where, that where my body is at right now is at like a, a point of no return, where I have thus far not been willing to push my doses beyond about a gram and a half of gear per week. That is, that is, that is as far as I have been willing to push it. When I look at the cycles that have been produced, that have been suggested by pros, they're taking a hell of a lot more shit that I'm, I'm trying to remember the guy, I think it was Hollingshead, that, that, that there was an article I read where he, he was talking about his doses and they were substantially greater than mine. So I am borderline ready to run an experiment where I throw absolutely all caution to the wind and jack my doses through the roof and find out what happens if I run like, a gram of test and 600 grams, 600 milligrams of DECA and Anadrol and like what, and, and what would it be? Like, that's another thing I'm, cause I'm so used to running this lifestyle bodybuilding cycle where I've got the mast, you know, I've got the cutting agents along with the bulking agents. Like if you were going to do, if you were going to try to put on as much mass on your frame as you could in a limited, in a limited period of time, you know, what would it be? You take the mass, the proviron out, 
What is it? DECA, EQ, do you run trend at all? Giant doses of test, Anadrol. If you if you if you were advising me, and and you and I didn't care about looking like look, looking like Regan Grimes does right now. I didn't care about losing all of my vascularity and my definition and all that. I just wanted to inflate this body to 230 pounds, currently at about 212. What would be your recommendation as far as how many how many grams of gear, in in, in what compounds, and in, in what would you estimate would be the necessary calories for a person of my body composition, five foot ten, currently two twelve, with like I said, you you can look at my you can look at my my latest check in and see what my abs actually look like in in proper lighting. You can see how dry my upper body is. You can look on my Discord and see that there is not a drop of water on my calves or, or lower body. That I am already incredibly peeled, even eating as much as I can eat and spoon feeding tablespoons of pure olive oil trying to jack my calories up. If you were going to advise me, what do I need to do? to get to 230 plus pounds at all costs. Gear, food, what what is it? Please in the comments section let me know. Do you believe that 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 I, this is just me and my drug seeking behavior or am I onto something? It, 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 is it, it, is the reality that I have hit a body a body size for my weight that is just not going to continue to continue to get any bigger in the absence of very large amounts of androgens. Is that where we're at? Or does this pure and simply come down to the fact that I just can't eat 8,000 calories a day and grow? Please, in the comments section, let me know what you think. As always, thank you for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one.